Now, if you go to the Common Core website, and this is the Common Core website, you will see that the Common Core standards are copyrighted. They're owned by two trade organizations, the National Governors Association Center for Best Practices and the Council of Chief State School Offices. They are headquartered in Washington, D.C. They are actually, the National Governors Association Center is actually not made up of the 50 governors. It's a private nonprofit organization. They file their own separate tax return. And they, when you use the standard, you must put in a copyright notice that it's owned by these two groups. Unless you're a state, and the states didn't have to tell the citizens that the standards were actually copyrighted to two private nonprofit organizations. But the website has a little bit more information than that. Have you ever bought a car? You probably came here in a car tonight, so I'm assuming you have. You can go and you can buy the brand new car, you know, the one with the 100,000 mile or 10 year bumper to bumper warranty. That's just amazing. Well, maybe you can't afford that. So you go and you buy one that's gently used. You know, like if the, the 2016 models are coming out, so you buy the 2015. That was the dealer model that has the balance of the manufacturer's warranty on it. Maybe you can't afford that. So you go to a dealer and you buy a more used car that has the dealer's warranty, 90, 120 days, the engine, the transmission. Maybe you can't afford that. My youngest son is beginning his senior year in college, and last year, when he was a junior, with great pride and $850 and a lot of help from mom, he bought his very first car. And you know what it said in the window, right? As is. Meaning, as soon as you sign this document, even if you can't get the car off the lot, it's your problem. The Common Core website says that the Common Core state standards are provided as is. You know, like the oldest and most dilapidated cars. And the website goes on to say that the owners of the standards assume no liability whatsoever for any harm that comes to a student, a teacher, a district, or anyone else who uses the standards. In fact, if you use them, you waive the right to seek legal redress against the owners of the standards. So the owners of the Common Core State Standards do not stand behind their product to the same extent that Sears stands behind a power saw. Did anyone notice? Yes. While the standards were being written, people did notice. This is an article from the Washington Post talking about how early childhood experts began looking at the standards and realizing there weren't any early childhood people on this committee. So where are we developing the standards? And when the draft first came out, one of the early childhood experts from Hawaii, she was um, the chair of the advocacy committee of the National Association of Early Childhood Teacher Educators, said, the people who wrote these don't appear to have any knowledge whatsoever of how little ones learn. They're not research-based, these folks found. Why? Because see, when something is research-based, it goes like this. I develop the product, and then I give you a copy, and I give you a copy, and I give you a copy, and I say, could you test it for six weeks or six months? And then I come back and say, did you like it? What did you like? What did you not like? And then I revise it, and then I do that again. But the Common Core State Standards were developed in secret, and they were plunked into the marketplace as is. There was no research circle. They didn't test the standards, and they never asked for any feedback. So by definition, it couldn't have been research-based because they didn't do any research.